The first part of this video is about stretching the balloon. Now we stretch the balloon before we fly it in order to increase its volume. And by increasing the volume, it's, you know, the balloon will float at a much higher altitude than uh, without stretching it. Uh, in order to stretch, we need a bit of equipment. We need a tape measure that's larger than 100 inches. I got this at Joanne Fabrics for a few dollars. You also need an air pump, which is a standard aquarium air pump that you can get at a pet store. Uh, then you also need valves. Uh, this is aquarium valves that are used for an aquarium, standard uh, aquarium valves, and also standard aquarium air hose, standard plastic aquarium air hose. Okay, now, the other thing you're going to need is some aluminum tubing. This is eighth inch aluminum tubing. I got this at Ace Hardware for uh, just a, a couple of bucks. And you'll need a piece of that that will connect to some of the air hose. And this is going to be used to insert into the balloon and send air into the balloon. The first part of the balloon is actually a, a plastic valve. So this has to be inserted all the way in through that plastic valve. Now, also, you should see there's a few nickels here. Later on when, you see, when we talk about uh, adjusting the lift, the fill tube will have to be heavier than the lift that's required. And you'll see that later on. Okay, there's one last thing, and that's a shoestring. And this is used to tie the opening of the balloon uh, so that it's, there's a firm seal around the fill tube going into the balloon. Okay, stretching a balloon is pretty simple. Connect the tubing like you see here in the diagram. I use a piece of shoestring to hold the tubing uh, into the balloon as we pressurize it. Sometimes the valve on the balloon is difficult to open up. Uh, it's difficult to get the tubing in. What I do is hold the valve uh, of the balloon between my lips lightly and blow air above and below it. That seems to open it up uh, pretty quickly. Uh, the other end of the tubing is connected to the valves, and then the valves are connected to the air pump. And the valves are adjusted so that the balloon uh, slowly increases in pressure. I take about 12 to, 12 to 18 hours to fill my balloons. I do that because I want the balloons to consistently expand. I don't want weaker parts to expand more than others. Uh, that uh, Doing it slowly, I think, makes it more uniform. Uh, but it's not science. Uh, you, you might be able to do it much more quickly and get the same results. All I know is what I've done uh, seems to work. You can't go by pressure. Uh, you can't uh, increase it to a particular pressure either. Uh, the, the total pressure that's required is a strong function of the humidity in the room. High humidity will make the balloon weaker and a, a lower pressure will make it expand to the right size uh, more quickly. So what you need to do is to measure the size of the balloon and, it, and blow it up to a particular size. And let me show you that now in, this, in the next part of this video. This is what a fully stretched balloon looks like. It's perfectly smooth, except if you look closely at the seams, there's still a little bit of a ripple. But overall, it's, it's very smooth and very hard. Now, the way you know that it's fully inflated is that you use that tape measure around the equator of the balloon. You just lift up the, uh, the tape measure and you see exactly what the circumference is. And this is, uh, looks like it's going to be very close to 100 inches and it's just slightly, slightly more than 100 inches. So that's a fully stretched balloon. Okay, we just got done exhausting the balloon. We used a vacuum cleaner to just suck the air out. And as soon as we were done sucking the air out, we put a, a screw in the end to keep air from getting sucked back in because there's a little bit of springiness in the balloon and it will just uh, take a little air in. We don't want any air in there. It'll just uh, It'll mess up the, uh, the lift. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is start filling this with hydrogen or helium. Okay, we're ready to fill the balloon now, and we have to make a decision of what we're going to use, helium or hydrogen. 
In the past, I've used helium. Uh, I started out buying helium-filled balloons from the dollar store and extracting the helium from the balloons and putting it into my balloon. Those are usually only 80% or maybe even 70% helium, and I actually got the balloon to work. I've not tried it with the newer, bigger 32-inch balloons, uh, but it w I did get it to float uh, and float all the way to Europe using that technique. Uh, since then, someone has given me a tank of helium, and I've been using that exclusively, and that's pure helium, and it works very well. But I'm not sure I'll be able to replace it once I, I've used it up. It's very hard to get. Uh, they typically do not sell it to new customers, and it's usually taken by uh, either medical or uh, scientific uh, areas uh, to support their, uh, um, their processes. Hydrogen, on the other hand, is a typically used in welding. It's very common and it's much easier to get. Uh, it's less, much less expensive than helium, uh, but it is flammable. It's, it's flammable at very low uh, limits. As little as 5% helium mixed with ox oxygen will explode. However, if you have pure hydrogen, it will not explode. It will burn. Even if you look at the, uh, the actual true movies, of the large Hindenburg dirigible that that burned, uh, you can see that it actually burns and it doesn't did not explode. And in fact, no one was killed in that uh, in that accident. So it's up to you. Right now, I have helium and I'm going to be using helium. I don't know if there's any danger in breathing hydrogen, as as you will see in the next part of the video. I actually breathe the helium. I don't know what kind of effects hydrogen has on you if you breathe it. Once we've chosen the gas, we need to determine how much lift uh, we're going to need in the balloon. This determines how much helium we need to put into the balloon. Uh, the balloon needs to lift the tracker and the solar panel, uh, the antenna, and uh, any glue or tape or whatever, whatever else that uh, is uh, part of the tracker. Uh, but in addition to that, you need some free lift, uh, uh, so about 7 grams of free lift. So totaling that up, uh, when we're all, inserted, all, all is said and done, and we remove the fill tube from the balloon, we need a lift of 23.38 grams. Okay, the fill tube by itself weighs about 31.61 grams. So if we put that on a scale, and uh, the whole thing the fill tube connected to the balloon, and we put the fill tube on the scale. If the scale reads 8.23 grams, when we, when we remove the fill tube, the remaining balloon will have the proper lift. So let's see that actual, actually happen in the next part of the video. Okay, so here's our helium tank, and we have a, a connection here. Is a, best I could do was find something that kind of fit and uh, tape it on with, with black electrical tape. But we have the same aquarium type of uh, tube and in the end we have got a little piece of, of uh, aluminum tubing like we have, have used to fill up the balloon. So then we're going to take this and put it in the end of the fill tube and fill up uh, with, with some helium. Okay, so we've got uh, the tube connected up, you're going to start filling it with helium.
Okay, we need to fill it up enough so it'll float. So we have to fill it up a little bit more. Uh, we have a uh, slip of the tube here. Looks like we need a little bit more. So we need we need to get the float. It's almost close. Okay, good. Okay, I'll put that in there. Shut off the helium. Put in tight. Okay, so now what we need is we need a lift of exactly 8.23 grams. So we open this up and we need to suck out enough so that we get a little bit of weight in here. Hello, hello, hello. The speed of air, air, sound in helium is different than air, so that your sound that your voice makes is considerably different. So we're two grams now. We're at uh, three grams. We're at uh, three and a half grams. Four grams. Four and a half grams. Okay, we're at five grams now. And what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit for a while because put the screw back in 
because the temperature of the helium when it comes out of the tank is a lot colder because every time gas expands the, temp the temperature decreases. So uh, we're going to let the, uh, the helium equilibrate to room temperature before we continue on measuring the lift. Okay, we come to the most important part of the balloon process and that's sealing the balloon. Many times I've seen on the web flights that go up to altitude and immediately start coming down. I believe that's due mainly to problems with sealing uh, the balloon opening. I use two things to seal it. I use a contact cement. This is a simple contact cement I get at Home Depot, Weldwood contact cement. I use this to fill in the, uh, the plastic tubing and it provides a sticky high viscosity glue inside the tube to prevent air from leaking out. Okay. In addition to that, I use uh, a couple layers of this Scotch heavy duty um, packing tape. Now packing tape and the uh, contact cement have some special characteristics that you want to take into account. Okay, so to use the contact cement I use a Q-tip and I stick it into the balloon opening about this far and I squeegee it back and forth to get a a, a nice even coating uh, throughout that tube. So this plastic tubing continues on into the balloon about four inches. So I want that tubing to be closed by the high viscosity contact cement. The contact cement doesn't even have to dry. It just needs to be a very high viscosity that will prevent gas from coming out and seal any small openings that might have we might have. Okay, once once we have the glue up until uh, this location here um, spread out evenly. I then do a double fold. I fold the clear part of the opening up and then I do a second fold to make sure that the contact cement is in a fold. Okay. Okay. So once that there's a double fold then I put a piece of tape over it. Now let's talk about tape a little bit. Tape does not necessarily stick real well. You can put tape here and it comes off not too, not too difficultly. So you can't rely on this tape sticking to the balloon and holding the, the opening shut. What type of joint can you use with this, with this type of tape to uh, make it uh, trustworthy to hold it shut? Well, Tape is made to hold boxes closed, so pulling it off something is exactly the wrong way to use tape. Uh, one way to use tape is to use a tape-to-tape -tape bond. So here we have two pieces of tape, sticky part to sticky part. If you put those two together, they're not coming apart, and especially if you pull in the lateral direction uh, where it has the most, most strength. You can't peel this apart very easily. Uh, I'm not going to even try and do that. It's, uh, it's very strong. So another way to use this is to use tape on tape. So this tape is made so it will stick really well to itself. And once you do that, again, it's very hard to pull these two, two things apart, especially in this direction. This is the direction that tape is meant to be used in. Okay? So, I use two pieces of tape. One piece of tape will go around this way and the ends will be glued together, glue surface to glue surface. Okay, they'll extend just a little bit off the edge. Okay, then they'll, I'll create another piece of tape which is a T shape. A T goes out this way and a, and a piece of tape goes this way. I'm able to fold one piece of tape over this way, one piece of tape over this way, and then a final piece of tape over the top like that. And that forms a, a significant joint that doesn't come apart. Okay, I, I tied a bowl and knot on the connection here. And then I tied some simple knots right on top of that just to make sure the bowl didn't come out. And now what I'm going to do is put a piece of tape over this part right here. Because that looks like a sharp edge. 
And if this goes back and forth, I don't want that sharp edge to cut this, this string. Okay, so there we have it. We have the final uh, connection there, uh, the uh, tape holding the uh, line, the line having a nice strong knot here. And now we're ready to go out in the field and launch.